On today's Live Open Daily, Meta owns nine virtual reality studios and has released two games in just about two years. Where are the games at? I'm your host, Live Open Mike. Today, we're looking at the nine developers that operate under Oculus Studios, kind of go through each one of them, what they're working on right now, and look at the ones that haven't put out any content in a while and see what they possibly may be up to. We'll start with the ones that we already know. Uh, first with N, they're the makers of Supernatural. That is the workout app, one of the more popular workout apps on the Quest platform. Of all the developers on this list, Within is the only one that has what is called in the industry recurring revenue, i.e. subscription prices. There is a sub service for Supernatural where people can get additional cosmetics, skins, and things like that to be able to work out to their heart's content. Within also is still updating the app with, again, new environments, uh, new ways to work out, new songs, so on and so forth. If they were never to put out another app that probably be okay for meta revenue wise because again that game is making a lot of money and i don't know if anyone remembers but when they first tried to acquire within the ftc actually sued meta because they said between within and beat games which is beat saber they were going to have a monopoly on a lot of the content in vr that lawsuit was eventually thrown out and meta proceeded with the purchase but Within is a studio that is continually working on their app and because of the sub service i don't really see them putting anything new out then there is Beat Games. We just talked about them, the makers of Beat Saber. This is another game that continuously gets updates. They've released in the last two years, I think two or three free OSTs. The last one was OST 7 earlier this month, and it had five new tracks with that. There was a paid DLC from Queen. There was a paid album from Lizzo. Uh, Lady Gaga's been on there. There was a hip hop mixtape that came out a while back that had some rappers from the 90s. I'm of a certain age, so I actually dug that one. But again, Beat Saber is something that will continue to make money for Meta hand over fist, probably into perpetuity. That's one of the most popular VR games ever made. I would guess maybe Gorilla Tag's maybe surpassed it at this point, looking at some of the reports for what Gorilla Tag is doing numbers wise, but Beat Saber is perennially in the top 10 across every platform it's on. It's one of the most popular games ever. If Beat Games never puts out another game, they can just update Beat Saber over and over and over again. That game will probably live forever, honestly. Next is Big Box, that's Population One. Uh, Pop One actually went free to play on the Quest platform, I think about a year and a half ago now. It is still a paid app on Steam or any other PC VR platform that you wanna get it on, but it is cross-buy, so if you buy the Quest version, you get the PC version for free. Most recently, they put out their Phoenix Royale mode. We did a podcast on that a couple of weeks ago. Go ahead and check that one out if you want like gameplay and impressions on that. You have to watch the video version to see the gameplay, obviously. Uh, but before that, they again went free to play. They put out the sandbox mode where users in the community can actually create their own maps, which gave them an endless amount of content. Honestly, I've been in the sandbox mode. Some of those maps are kind of crappy, but there's some pretty cool ones out there. And before that, even probably about two years ago now, they put out a different map called Retropolis. So they're still updating the game and putting a lot of content into it. Um, I thought the Phoenix Royale mode was excellent. I really, really liked it. And it got me back into playing Pop One after I kind of steered away and started looking at some other shooters. So I do see a future where they do put out another shooter, Population Two or Population Zero, something like that. I can actually see that happening uh, because there's only gonna be so much they can get from that engine and they may wanna go like the Call of Duty route where they release new games every few years so they can just overhaul the whole game and the whole process. I don't really see Population One being like Fortnite where they continually just update that game into perpetuity because a game like Fortnite does seasons and events and chapters and they change out the lore all the time. Pop One doesn't really do that. They just do new cosmetics and skins and all the microtransactions that a lot of people like me have come to hate, but that's how that game makes money. So unlike Beat Games and Within, I could actually see Big Box release another game down the line, but it probably will be for a while because Pop One is still doing pretty well for them. We also know about Sanzaru Games. They just released Asgard's Wrath 2 this past December. That game was actually bundled free with the Quest 3. So if you pre-order the Quest 3, actually if you bought it up until the, I think the beginning of this month, you got Asgard's Wrath 2 for free. If you pre-ordered it, you got Asgard's Wrath 1 for free. The devs of Sanzaru Games had done multiple interviews saying that they were working on this game for three to four years and this is their big push. In addition to the 100 plus hour story campaign, there's also a completely separate roguelite mode called the Uncharted Rifts. In the last few months since in the last few months since the game released they have been doing monthly events in the uncharted rifts where you go out into the real world the main story of the game and get to hunt down certain creatures go through certain monsters dens and they also have achievables that you can hit within the uncharted rifts itself they've also continually updated that one with new maps and new content so again unlike b games and within if you look at the history of what sanzaru has done roguelites and games that are always online and games that they continually update like the live service ish model is not really their jam so i could definitely see them putting out another game down the line but we'll probably won't see that for i'm going to say three to four years 
games of this scale take a really long time to make but until then we're going to content ourselves with continuing the updates and the uncharted risk of asgard's wrath 2 if that's your thing then there's camouflage most of us in the know have known about batman arkham shadows for a while we didn't know what it was actually called but when meta first bought camouflage and the government filings for that approving the purchase they said that they were working on iron man vr which dropped in late 2022 that was right around the time we learned that meta was buying camouflage and they were also working on the untitled Batman game. So we've known about Batman. We know that was coming since late 2022, and we're just now getting information about Arkham Shadows that's gonna launch later on this year. So those five are the ones we know. We know Within, we know Beat Games, we know Big Box, we know Sanjuru Games, and we know Camouflage. It's the other four we don't know about. Downpour Interactives, the makers of Onward, had continually updated that game. It just got an update on June 11th. That's nine days before I recorded this podcast. Adding a new mercenary mode, of course, with other new like quality of life fixes and hot fixes and yada, 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 cosmetics. Every month, Onward has put out a sit rep where they go through the things that they're working on. Basically, it's like a dev diary. They'll go through like the things they're working on. They'll put out hot fixes, upcoming new game modes, things like that. So the game has been continually updated. When that game first got ported to Quest, there were a lot of PC VR players who were, I think, rightfully upset because to make that game crossplay compatible, remember this is being ported down to the Quest 1, that was a lot of downscaling. So some of the graphics got stripped out, some of the features that they couldn't implement properly on the Quest 1's platform got stripped out, and that upset a lot of the PC VR players because even though it expanded the player base, it fundamentally changed the game. I'd also argue that because they had to lower the draw distance for Quest players, people who were on PC VR who still had a greater level of detailed distance, actually had an advantage so competitively it wasn't really there anyway now they have over the last three years or so slowly added those features back in and since they finally dropped quest one support early last year they have been able to upscale the graphics not quite to where they look like pre-quest it doesn't look like full pcbr but it does look a lot better than the really really rough stuff that they put out when they first scaled it down to quest one because quest two and now quest three are much more capable of that it's been better Having said all that, about a year and a half ago, Mark Zuckerberg was doing an interview, and among that, he said he, quote, could not wait for Onward 2. We haven't heard anything about Onward 2. There's been no announcement of that. It was just Mark talking in the interview, and Mark's done this a few times. We've known him to jump the gun a few times. Just look at Assassin's Creed. They hear about that for two years, over two years, until Meta said something about it at their gaming showcase, and the Nubisoft finally revealed the game, and it came out later that year. But we've known about Assassin's Creed Nexus since, like, 2021 did come out to 2023. I don't really need to talk about Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. That was announced and then has never been heard from again. He also jumped the gun on Splinter Cell, which was canceled by Ubisoft about a year later. And they talked about Vertigo Games doing some work with Deep Silver on, I think it was like five or six of their franchises to try to bring them into VR. Thus far, the only one we've heard of is Metro. So Mark Zuckerberg has a pretty bad habit of jumping the gun and announcing stuff years out ahead of time. And I really wish he wouldn't do that because now in the back of our minds, we're thinking just like with Batman and with Grand Theft Auto and with Splinter Cell before it was canceled, we're thinking that Onward 2 is coming, but the developers, they've been completely tight-lipped since then. So my guess is with batman being like the tent pole game we're probably not gonna see any more first party titles for the rest of the year but into 2025 hopefully start seeing something from these studios including onward 2. then there is ready at dawn and this is a controversial one ready at dawn are the developers of lone echo 1 and 2 along with echo arena aka echo vr and echo combat which was a pc vr only combat based zero gravity game Echo VR controversially was shut down last year by Meta, basically saying that they needed to free up as many resources as possible for their next big project that they were working on. Shortly thereafter, a bunch of people from Ready at Dawn were actually laid off, along with some people from Downpour Interactive, when Meta laid off something like 11,000 employees across all of their companies, not just Reality Labs and Oculus Studios, but across all their divisions. So you're talking social media, Instagram, WhatsApp. All of them, while well, Ready at Dawn and Downpour Interactive were pretty heavily affected by that. Echo VR was shut down before those layoffs happened, so fingers crossed that those, whatever that project is that they need these resources for, that they had to shut down one of the most popular games in VR. Hopefully that project is still on the table. My guess is still on Echo 3, because Ready at Dawn, just like Sansaru Games, generally makes single player games. They don't really do like the live service games or a lot of multiplayer stuff. Echo VR always felt like an unexpected hit to them that they kind of had to do. The first version of that, Echo Arena, was actually like a multiplayer, almost like an add-on to the first Lone Echo game, and it proved to be so popular that it got spun off into its own game. This is one of the projects that I fear may be canceled because if they just gutted that staff, it was something like 60% of that team got laid off, 
I can't see them unless they were already pretty much at the finish line for that game. Really can't see them putting out a new product. My guess is we'll find out something again in 2025 because they're really putting all their eggs in the basket with Batman for the rest of this year. Then there's Armature Studios. You're gonna know them best as the makers of the very, very excellent Resident Evil 4 port for Quest 2 that came out in 2021 but they haven't released a game since. Uh, this was the only project that they put out there. I put out a video and put myself on the record that I thought Armature Studios was working on the port, hopefully tying into the Meta Microsoft partnership where they're gonna bring one of Microsoft's big franchises to VR. So I guess something like Gears of War, Sea of Thieves. I threw Forza in there, but I don't think Forza could been handled on the Quest 2, maybe even on Quest 3, but even still, that's gonna be stretching it. Armature has a history of porting big franchises onto standalone or mobile platforms. There was a Metal Gear Solid collection that was on PlayStation Vita. They also did some work on Batman Arkham Origins and ported that to a bunch of different consoles. So this is what Armature does. I don't really see a first party original title for them, but I can see them porting a major flat screen title into VR. My hope is still that they're gonna leverage this Microsoft partnership since we're getting an Xbox branded headset from them that they'll leverage them and put armature on, I don't know, like a Gears of War VR. I think that'd be amazing, but that's all just conjecture. We haven't heard anything from armature and going on three years now, their social media is very, very quiet. Some of it's non-existent, has been updated in over a year. So don't know what they're working on. Meta, where they at? Give us something. Last developer is Twisted Pixels. Their past projects were Wilson's Heart. That was a PC VR story-based horror game. It's actually pretty good. The entire game was shot in black and white and it just looks really stylistic, almost like a 1930s noir horror movie. It's really cool, check it out. Uh, they released an endless runner type game called B Team that I wasn't the biggest fan of, but then their other two games I thought were excellent. Defector is this wild madcap action spy game with a bunch of different branching narratives. It's a lot of fun. It is only on the Rift Store. It is not on standalone and it's not on Steam. So you have to get the Rift Store to be able to get that. But, and the other game is Path of the Warrior. That's a beat em up in the style of something like Double Dragon or Streets of Rage. So if you're of a certain age and you love those games, Path of the Warrior is an excellent game for that. Path of the Warrior was also their last game. Now, unlike Armature that went completely quiet, Twisted Pixel, after it was announced that they were acquired by Meta, also put out some job listings for some new titles, and one of them was for lead VR producer. The first line here says, Twisted Pixels is looking for an experienced lead VR producer to assist in delivering our next virtual reality and triple A game. The other two positions they were hiring for was a QA engineer and a senior technical artist. I'm not gonna read those descriptions because they're less flary. Uh, the lead VR producer is the only one that mentions specifically AAA games. If you go through the qualifications for that, one of them is that shipped at least three published titles as producer or senior producer. So they're looking for someone to kind of like steer the ship. This listing has been active on Meta's site and on Twisted Pixel's site for well over a year now. So I don't even know if they filled that role yet, but the fact that they said to lead a AAA game, I think was significant. No clue what that is. Twisted Pixel's never done a straight port of a game or worked on any big IP. All of the games, at least in VR, have been all original content. They've all been fun games, but relatively short games. I think Wilson's Heart is their longest game and it's about maybe five or six hours long, if that. But either way, they do make fine games and I hope we find out about some of them in 2025. The reason I keep saying 2025 is because with Batman coming up and it feels like Meta wants to release like one tentpole title per year, first party, and then they'll bring out a bunch of like big third party games. Oculus Studios on top of owning all these companies also does a lot of publishing rights and a lot of publishing deals and funding for third party titles. Meta cut Ubisoft a nice big check to develop that game so they didn't all fall on Ubisoft and frankly I don't think we ever get that game if Meta doesn't step up and write that check. Also Meta and Sony co-paid for the development of Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord from In Dreams because as you can imagine that license had to be very, very expensive for that particular IP. There's been dozens of games in the last few years from Oculus Studios, at least games that they funded from third-party developers. Stuff like Among Us VR is probably a big notable one. Uh, Bulletstorm VR had some funding from them. And I could go on and on and on. But in terms of their first party releases, there was Iron Man VR, which was a port of a PlayStation VR 1 game that came from Camouflage. That's when we found out that Meta owned Camouflage. And then last year, it was Asgard's Wrath 2 at the end of the year. This year is Batman Arkham Shadows. All the other big games that are coming to VR later on this year that you can think of are all third party titles like Alien, like Metro, and like Behemoth. All those are being done by other studios. I don't know if Meta has any hand in the funding there, but those are all third party titles. So in terms of first party titles, we've basically gotten drip fed one per year and then updates for existing titles. So that's why I keep saying 2025. If I had to hazard a guess because we're not getting the Meta Gaming Showcase, go listen to the pod from a couple days ago if you want more info on that from Meta CTO Andrew Bosworth. 
Because we're not getting the Meta Gaming Showcase this year, my presumption is they'll do what they used to do at Connect in years past. They'll drip feed some gaming content and sprinkle that into all the other talks and platitudes that they're doing for what is basically an investor show. That's what Meta Connect pretty much is. We got the first view of Asgard's Wrath 2 in the last Meta Gaming Showcase last year. That was in June. And then Asgard's Wrath 2 dropped in December. Iron Man VR was also revealed at Meta Connect, and then that game dropped about a month later. So wouldn't surprise me to see something come out of Meta Connect from first party, but I don't think we see another first party game from Meta until 2025. That just seems to be the schedule that they're going on. One last thing I should note, Meta actually does own a 10th studio. They're called Take Two Games, but they don't have any involvement in VR. Uh, they made an app called Krata, which users could use to like build their own games and their own experiences. And that was actually tied to Facebook gaming. Facebook gaming is pretty much dead at this point. One could argue it's been dead for quite some time. And Krata actually shut down last year. Now, just like Ready at Dawn, when Take-Two announced that they were shutting down Krata, they said we need to free up resources basically for our next project. We still don't know what that next project is. I always assumed that Take-Two kind of got filled into the Meta Horizon Worlds team and started developing some of those games we've seen pop up because they've made a really strong push in creating like more authentic games like Rumble the Shooter that got a lot of content creator coverage earlier this year and I think late last year. It wouldn't surprise me if Take-Two had a hand in that because that looks like something that's right up their alley. So that's also something that works on flat screen and Horizon Worlds has recently launched on mobile platforms so you can play stuff on your phone and there are games tied to that. Again, that's all conjecture. I don't have any sources on that. It just makes sense to utilize that talent to build out your metaverse platform when that's what they're basically doing with something like Krata. So that's the rundown. I don't think a lot of people know that Meta owns all these studios and the games that they've worked on. But if you look at Meta's release studio first party games, it's basically been one per year. So Resident Evil 4 in 2021, Iron Man VR 2022, Asgard's Wrath 2023, and this year we're getting Batman Arkham Shadow. So they're probably drip fitting these out one by one. I would love to get two or three titles a year. I was kind of overshooting the moon when I did some YouTube videos covering that. But just looking at the facts, that's what I think we can expect. So we'll see some more from them in 2025. That's a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for checking it out. You can get Live Open Daily and my other podcast, The XR Remix, on YouTube, YouTube Music, iHeart, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. You want to see more of my content? Check me out on Twitch at Live Open Mic. I stream VR there a couple of days a week and generally kind of goof off and have a lot of fun. Thanks, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.